Oh no. So I have hope for this truck. Ooh, it might be seized up. Dang it. It's not what we wanted to see. Welcome back to Wrench Fest Garage. Today we're super excited. We have the opportunity to work on a truck that I've wanted to work on for a long time. And it's behind this door right here. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. This is a World War II era truck. It's a Chevrolet G506, and these are manufactured from 1940 to 1945. And during the war, they hauled just about everything from cargoes to bombs to whatever they needed. These were basically the workhorses of World War II. This particular truck was owned by my father-in-law who passed away roughly 40 years ago and has been sitting in this spot ever since. From the information that I can gather, he purchased this in 1965, shortly after he was married. When he bought this truck, he went to work on it. He shortened the frame, he put a truck bed on it, and he built a custom snow plow for it. He would go and plow out anybody that needed their driveways plowed, the widows, whatever in town. He just made sure that everybody was in good shape. As you can see, the snow chains are still on this truck 40 years later. I've known about this truck for about 30 years, but I've never taken a real good look at it till today. So up front here, it has a PTO driven winch. This thing is super heavy duty, it's so cool. And you can see he had a pulley up here, and this is how he raised and lowered the plow off of this winch. This bumper, dude, that's pretty solid quarter inch. It's super heavy duty. This truck appears to be very original and error correct. It looks like the axles, the wheels, everything are factory original. The fenders, they're, they're stout. They're super heavy duty. It looks like there's been some damage repaired up here, a little bit of welding. There's some dings on this back of this headlight. Not sure what happened there. This light's still there. I'm sure it don't function, but it's super cool. Oh, those are the blackout lights right there that's still there. That was used in World War II. They could drive with them, I guess, in the dark. I don't know how that worked. But as you can see, it still says Chevrolet on the hood. And it looks like there was a mirror mounted right here and there's some holes right there because of that. The hood looks pretty good, but it looks like there's a dent right there in the middle, probably where it came up and hit the cab maybe, not sure. As you can see, the back of this fender is a little bit beat up. There's a weld seam right here. But overall, it's there and it's in pretty good condition. These running boards look to be in pretty good condition. There's some holes and cracks back here, but their bottom's fairly solid. This is a little bit sketch, but it doesn't look to be rusted out. It's just not mounted to anything. This door, it looks to be in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of rust on the bottom, which is pretty normal. Moisture gets down there and that kind of stuff happens. But overall, it looks pretty good. Let's see if the door opens. So look at that, that door still opens. That's pretty awesome. Let's see if it shuts. Close enough. I'm not sure where this bed came from, what it's off of, but it's pretty stout. It's pretty thick metal. I don't really see any rust holes or anything in it. It appears that the rear axle is probably original to the truck, and it's probably been shortened quite a bit. It's probably a six foot bed. Um, it looks like this is probably where the fenders were mounted at one time, which you can see are not gonna work with this setup. So it's probably why it doesn't have fenders on the back of it. I don't ever remember it having fenders, but uh, the guy could build some fenders and make this bed look really, really super cool. But this bed is tough. It's there, it's on there. I like it. This is part of the snow plow bracket. This is what attaches the snow plow to the truck, or part of it, what it does. It sits clear back behind the cab and goes way up. It looks like somebody's attempted to take it off because it's missing some bolts and stuff, but it appears to be all there. So this is where the frame was cut on the back. It appears that it was cut with a torch, which was common back then. This frame is pretty straight, so I'm sure what he did was just cut this frame and then took the spring axle and everything, and moved it forward, drilled new holes in the frame, and that's probably how he set it up. The interior appears to be pretty much intact. It's clear full of mouse turds and a little bit dirty. There's a hole in the seat right here. Looks like there's some added cushions right there. 
But it looks like it's all here. All the gauges and stuff are there. Who knows if they work. The key's actually in the ignition still. Does it, does it really turn too good, but it's there. That's like an old boot, an old leather boot that somebody made a key tag out of. That's super cool. Looks pretty good, pretty intact. No giant rust holes in the floor or anything like that. So yeah, it's pretty cool. This is pretty cool here. It looks like somebody cut in a gas hole for with a torch. And that's just the way they left it. Oh, that's some 40 year old gas right there. That smells horrendous. It is time to inspect under the hood. From what I can gather, my father-in-law actually replaced this engine at some point. So it's not the original engine. I've never had this hood open. I don't know what's underneath here, but the goal is to try to get this thing running. So let's take a look and see where we're at. Da, da. I don't know what to do at this point. Very gently. Oh, well, it just kind of sits there. All right, first glance looks pretty good. It looks like everything on this side is here. There's a carburetor. It looks like there's a generator, which probably means this is six volt. There's even some very old fuel in the flow and the fuel separator, fuel bowl, fuel filter, you know, the old class type uh, fuel separators they had. It has one and there's fuel in it. Um, air cleaners been on there. So I have hope for this truck. It's been in this barn where it's dry and that makes a huge difference. There is a starter in it. There's a coil, there's a distributor. It looks like it's got all the plug wires. It looks like it's all here. Looks like the radiator fan and all that stuff is intact. The hoses look horrible. The belt's even still there. So yeah, I think the next step, I'm gonna check the oil and then I'm gonna check and see if this thing will rotate 360 degrees and then we'll work on getting it cranking over. We've got the hood raised up and you can currently hear mouse turds falling down the hood. So that's pretty great. That's the way these old things go. I've also located the dipstick. So let's see what the oil looks like after sitting for 40 years. Dang, that looks actually, it's full. It's on the full mark and it kind of looks brown. So I was expecting to be very black and who knows what, but it smells, smells like old oil. It smells like more like oil than old gas. So that's a plus. Let's see if it's got any viscosity to it. Oh yeah, that's that's good and thick oil. Maybe too thick, but it smells old, but it's there and it still has some lubricity to it. So that's cool. Very nice, very nice. Now my hands are oily. Is lubricity a word? Yeah. Okay. I are mechanic. <laughs> Next thing we're going to check is the coolant, see if there's anything in here. Doesn't look like there's anything in there. I can't really see very far down in there, so there could be fluid down a little lower, but from what I can see, there's nothing in it. But we're not going to run this thing long enough to get it hot. We're just going to, for now, we're just going to start it. So you guys that are familiar with these trucks, I would imagine it came with a flathead straight six and this is not a flathead. This looks more like uh, like a 292 or a 250. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments what should be in this truck as far as a motor. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no. Ooh, it might be seized up. I cannot get it to spin over with the fan. It looks like the belt's not slipping at all. It looks like it should turn over, but it looks like it's pretty, pretty seized up. A lot of times what'll happen is they'll just get a little moisture down and the rings will seize up a little bit. And I think maybe that's what's happened with this one. So we may have to pull the spark plugs out put some lubrication down in those cylinders and then try to see if we can free it up. But it appears right now to be a little bit on the locked up side. Dang it. Let's 
not what we wanted to see. Oh, that makes things real tough. So it appears to be seized up, so we're gonna go ahead and pull these spark plugs out and put a little bit of WD-40 slash ATF slash mystery oil mix in here and uh, see if we can get this thing to spin over. All right, that plug doesn't look like there's any rust or anything on it. it just looks like it's kind of carbon fouled. Maybe a little oil fouled, but no rust. So that's, that's good. I can't really see down in there too good, but we're to start, I suppose. Okay, that one's not as oil fouled, just looks a little carbon fouled. That one is also carbon, well, a little carbon on it. A little, been running rich, but not oily like the first one. Yeah, doesn't look bad. We took all the spark plugs out and we put some penetrating fluid in the cylinders and we let it set for maybe 20 minutes or so, which is probably not gonna do it, but we're gonna try it, see if it did anything. I'm hoping it's not real super seized up. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, that didn't do nothing. Okay, that didn't do nothing. I didn't, I guess I didn't really expect it to, hoping to. But um, I'm gonna put some more penetrating lube in there and some ATF, and then I'll let it sit a little longer. I got a bunch of penetrating lube in the cylinders. Now I'm gonna pour this in there. This is basically ATF and gasoline, because this is what I had. I used gasoline to thin out the ATF a little bit. Hopefully it'll kind of help work its way down through the rings and whatever's seized up on this thing. Anyway, it's what I got, so this is what we're gonna try. We've got those cylinders soaking with my concoction, and now it's time to pull off the air cleaner, see what kind of mess we got going on in this carburetor. So first of all, it's basically covered in mouse turds, which is always nice. I uh, brought a little compressed air in here, blew it out. Probably gonna have the hantavirus, but let's have a look in here. Okay, it doesn't appear that anything's been able to get down through there. The air cleaner's been on there the whole time. So let's see if the throttle plates move. Okay, carburetor is good and seized up. That's a bummer. So, Probably while we're letting that concoction do its magic, we probably better pull out this carburetor and see if we can get it to function. So that'll be the next step. Oh, that just pops right off of there. This is an old oil bath air filter. Choke ain't seized though. All right, let's pop it off. Let's get out of the truck. Let's see what we got. You look like such a little kid standing right there working on a big truck. <laughs> There it is. There she goes. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything living or dying down in that manifold, so let's take that carburetor out and uh, see if we can get it to function somewhat. So this is what I was talking about earlier. There was a little bit of fuel in there. This is an old settling bowl. Fuel used to come in and run through this and all the nastiness, water and stuff was supposed to settle in the bottom of this bowl. And then you can just unscrew it at the bottom and dump it out and put it back in. Pretty cool. Just some nasty fuel going on in this. So I'm going to try to hit this with some uh, penetrating lube and see if I can get it to free up the throttle plates. If I have any penetrating lube left. I don't want to tear this carburetor apart unless it's absolutely necessary. And the reason is there's a gasket here and there's a gasket down there. And likely they're going to tear and not be in great shape. But I guess a guy could probably get these gaskets. But I'm just trying to get this running. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time and money on it. But uh, if it's necessary, that's the route we'll go. Maybe we'll walk over to this other truck that's sitting here because it also has a similar motor 
and see what kind of shape that carburetor's in. Yeah, it's a little different where the fuel goes in. It's a little bit different spot. But just curious to see if this one, yeah, this one feels like it is also seized up. Oh, that one kind of moves. It's rough as crap, but it kind of moves. So that may be an option if we can't get that other one to work. There it goes. That did it? That did it. That's good. All right, we're in business. So I pulled this off of this and hoping that we can use it for a fitting. So I'm just gonna put a hose over this, a fuel line. We're gonna run a completely separate tank because obviously the fuel is really old and I do not want to run it through this motor. So we're just gonna bypass this, gonna screw this into the carburetor and then I'm gonna put a fuel line on the other end of this. Hopefully it works without too many horrendous leaks. Did you put your mouth on that? Yeah. Did you taste some gas? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Gross. All right, we're gonna try just another time real quick to spin this over. I may have to figure out something different here because it's not, she's not budging. While we're waiting for my concoction to do its magic and hopefully unseize this motor, we went through the carburetor, we got it kind of functioning. I, I don't know what kind of shape it's in. We won't know until we throw fuel in it. So now I'm going to pull the distributor cap off and see what kind of mess we got going on in there while we're just waiting for this thing to soak and hopefully free itself up. That would be pretty cool. The other thing is the coil. Well, doesn't look great, but it has everything it's supposed to have. We need to figure out whether this is 6 volts or 12 volt system. I'm 98% certain it is a 6 volt system. It has a generator on it, does not have an alternator on it, but there is a small possibility that it could have a 12 volt generator, so I'm just going to See if I can clean this tag up, see if it says 6 volt, 12 volt, whatever, before we proceed. I have all kinds of mouse turds and chemicals and all the good stuff. Nothing but the best. Well, there it is, but I still can't read it. I think I just wiped everything off that it ever said. It's 12 volts. I got the tag cleaned off on that generator and it is a 12 volt. So that changed my plans a little bit, but we can still work with it. It's kind of better where it's a 12 volt system. Uh, they'll crank better. You usually get coils, stuff like that. So yeah. So I don't know if the camera does that justice, but that battery cable end is just rough. It's rotted. I'm never going to get a good connection on that. So it's time to do something a little different. Um, I've got some cable ends. We're probably just gonna solder those on for now, make it work. That's a big battery. <laughs> it's a little much. But it kind of fits. Not. There it is. All right, so that cable will reach and this one we got plenty, so we can make this work. I might just try to spin this over with the starter. I kind of hate to do it like that. I'd really like to get it to spin over by hand. Whew, I'm out of breath. That battery's really heavy. I'd like to spin this over by hand before we try to spin it over the starter because we can just damage stuff if we do it that way. So we're going to let this sit and soak. We're going to make battery cables and then we'll come back. See what we can figure out. Got a little off track there. We're back at the truck. 
we've let this thing set for about two hours with our special concoction in the cylinders. I'm hoping, I don't think it will, but I'm hoping it'll break free. So let's give it a try real quick. Not even budging. Not even a little bit. Either A, we need to pull the starter off, or B, we need to crawl under this thing. And the snowplow brackets are in the way. Uh, so I need to, need to move those so I can crawl under there. And that's probably the best idea because it looks like either way, I'm going to have to get underneath it to pull that starter off. So either way, I'm probably going to have to get underneath it. So let's work on that. This is way sketchy, but I'm going to attempt to fill this tire up. And I'd like to get it up just a little bit more so I can crawl under there. So I'm going to put a little bit air in this. Hopefully it doesn't explode on me. So this is kind of a double whammy. It is a split rim and it's a tire that's old, 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 old. So I'm just going to put a little air into it and uh, hopefully I don't die. <laughs> it's moving. So like I wish I could just hold this on and run away. I think this truck is moving in ways it hasn't been moved in a long time. Okay, I don't hear air pouring out of there. That tire's as hard as a rock. There it is. Please don't fall on me, old truck. So this is the clutch cover. So this will give me access to the flywheel. Okay, there's the clutch. Just gonna face it with something. Oh, look at that. Did it move? It's moving. Uh -huh. Is that what you put in there? Yep, it's pushing it out. Oh, there it goes. That gives me hope. It's pouring out from somewhere else now. Yeah, it ought to start pouring out from all six at some point. It broke free, so that's a big relief. I think maybe we can get this thing to start now. I'm going to spin it over a little bit on the front by hand. Kind of push out some more of that uh, gunk I put in there. It still has a rough spot. You can kind of fill it in one particular spot. I'm sure that's where it's been sitting for 40 years. So hopefully we can work that out of it. But side note, once these motors seize, they get a little rust in them, there's a good chance that it's not ever going to be a great motor again. You probably get a few miles out of it. It'll probably smoke like a bugger, but uh, it's really hard on them to get any sort of rust inside the motor. So anyway, we'll keep pushing forward. See if we can get this old gal to go. Yeah, there's a spot right there. That's at least one revolution. So now the next step is let's go ahead and hook up the battery and see if we can get this thing to crank over, get all the, get all that crap out of the cylinders before we put the spark plugs in. We'll make sure it's got spark. And at that point, we're going to throw the carburetor back on, give it some fuel. Who knows? She might go. what we wanted. The Bendix drive might be bad in it because it's... Why is it hot? Alright, so now it's time to test the spark. We got the motor turning over. We got some of the gunk cleaned out of it. Um, so what I'm doing now is jumping a wire across over to here. So this is a ballast resistor. It knocks the voltage down so it doesn't burn up your points. And I'm going to hook power to the 12 volt side of that and it'll come out and go down the coil and hopefully it'll give a spark. I kind of doubt it. I'm kind of guessing it's going to need some points, but we're going to, we got to start somewhere.
damn thing will run if we it, can get fuel to it. It sparked? It sparked. I'm gonna hit these spark plugs with this wire brush and hopefully it cleans them up just enough to make this thing run. We're gonna hook this fuel pump up to this carburetor and then we're gonna run it down to a gas can. I'm gonna try to fill up this carburetor just to see what it does. I don't wanna put it on the truck and have fuel spew all over because that's just gonna be a fire hazard. So I want to make sure that this pump and everything's going to work like it should and this needle and seat inside the carburetor is actually going to stop the fuel. And also I want to make sure the carburetor is not just going to spew fuel out the bottom. So this is kind of a bench test, kind of a test run. Let's see what kind of shape this carburetor is in. See if we need to rebuild it or if it may work. Okay, we got this all hooked up and we're going to see what this carburetor will do. Okay. Okay, not really sure what's happening, but it's not pouring fuel out anywhere. Oh, there it comes. That's a bad thing. Oh. We got fuel just dripping out the Venturi, so I don't know if I have too much pressure. I'm not sure what this pump puts out, but I can find out real quick. Or if it's flooding, because the needle and seat isn't working, or exactly what's going on. Might pay just to pull the top of this carburetor off and have a quick look and clean it up. Make sure the needle and seat's working. Well, that cage is not doing a lot of good. It says it's minus zero. That might have been just too much, too much pressure for that needle and seat. <sighs> no, that needle and seat is not working. <laughs> it is not shutting off. Let's see, is it still dripping in there? Because we can actually, as long as we're not continuing putting fuel in here, we can actually probably run this like it is. Well, let's throw it on there and see if we can at least get it to spin over. So. When I'm trying to start this, I may need somebody to hold the starter and somebody to run the throttle. And if it catches on fire, go grab a fire Someone extinguisher. Someone to run over and get a fire extinguisher. Okay, I think we're finally ready to attempt to start this. I think we got everything we need. I don't have a fuel source hooked up, but I do have the carburetor full of fuel. It appears that the needle and seat is bypassing, so it's just kind of flooding. So I just kind of got it just full enough. So we're gonna give it a go. See if it'll at least pop over and just see what happens. Okay. I don't think I'm getting any fuel down there. So let's grab just a little bit of shot of ether. That's too much. I gotta step out. It'd be good if you did the same. <laughs> we got this thing running. It's nothing short of a miracle, but it's pretty awesome. It runs pretty good. I'm pretty amazed. So tune in next week. We're gonna drive this thing. <laughs>